All right, day two, convenient congruent figures. We're going to classify each triangle in the figure by its sides, equilateral, isosceles, or scalene, and by the angles, acute, right, or obtuse. So, A, B, E. You might want to use a colored pencil or just your finger to trace this, but where is A, B, E? A, B, E is, well, A, B, E. All right. So, right about we notice there's a 90 degree angle in that. So that makes it a right triangle. All right. Now, look at the measurements. We have 9, 11.3, and this one doesn't have a number, but it's not marked the same as either of the other two, and it's clearly shorter. Therefore, all three sides are different measurements. So it is a scalene triangle. So it's a right scalene. All right, EDB. Where's EDB? EDB. Now notice with EDB, it has these two marks here, which means two of the sides are the same. Also, if you look at this angle here, this is clearly bigger than 90. All right, clearly bigger than 90. So that makes it an obtuse triangle. So it's obtuse and isosceles triangle. It's an obtuse isosceles triangle. EBC, where is that? EBC. Now, it might be hard to see since it's kind of upside down, but this angle right here looks to be a little slightly bigger than 90. And it doesn't have the right angle symbol, so we can't assume it's 90. So if you look at it kind of upside down, turn your paper, you will see it's probably about 92, 95, okay? So it's definitely obtuse. Now let's look at the sides, all right? We know, if you look carefully, that this and this are the same. Each one is this, which means EC is twice as long as BC. And then you have the 11.3 over here, so we can pretty much figure that that is scalene. So it's an obtuse scalene triangle. DBC, I'm going to clean this up a little bit because it's getting a little bit messy. DBC, where's that? D to the B to the C. Well, looky there. That has three equal sides. That makes an equilateral triangle. And it's also acute. All three of the angles are less than 90. So it's an equilateral acute triangle. And just for an extra bonus, we're going to find out that all three angles are equal, which also makes it, we're going to have a kind of a hint of a bonus word here, aquaangular. That's the same thing okay, as you know, all three angles are the same. Remember, equal sides, equal angles. All right, moving on. Find the angle marked with A, or A question mark. All right, well, again, I give you $108 to spend at the stores. And you're going to see three stores. If you spend 57 and 65, how much money have you spent? Well, you spent 12, 112. Sorry, 122. Carry, I forgot to carry the one. So what does that leave for right here? Well, 180 minus 122 is 58. 
okay? So, if you think about it, this angle and this angle form a straight line. They are a linear pair. So the question mark is 180 minus 58, which is 122. Sound familiar? We'll get back to that. All right. This angle here and this angle here form a straight line. So they are a linear pair. So angle E is 180 minus 137. So that makes angle E right here 43 degrees. And then we just add 43 plus 26 and get 69 degrees. That means angle G is 180 minus 69, which is 111 degrees. Okay, same idea here. We're going to find out what this angle is based on 115. So 180 minus 115, okay? Because they are a linear pair. I've drawn out the other ones. I'm not going to draw it out again. But 180 minus 115 is 65. So this angle right here is 65 degrees. Well, three angles in a triangle after 180. I spent 65 at one store. I spent 45 at another. So that means I spent $110. I have 108 to spend, I spent 110, that leaves 70. So the question mark is 70, okay? Now, I'm just gonna point it out, just so you see the connection. These two angles here, not the linear pair, but those two angles add up to that exterior angle there. These two angles right here add up to that angle right there. And these two angles right here add up to that angle right there. So there's two different ways to go about each problem, okay? Um, it's up to you how you figure it out. You know, so in other words, on this last problem, we could have just done 115 minus 45 to get 70. So there's, it's a shortcut, basically but you do what you're most comfortable with. All right, so congruent figures. All pairs of sides are equal. And all pairs of angles are equal. They're congruent. They're the same. So, if triangle ROB and FUN are congruent, then name the three angle pairs and three segment pairs that are congruent. Here's a trick. So take ROB, and then write FUN right underneath it. Watch. You've got it. Because sometimes the pictures are tilted or spun around and it can be confusing. So if you just look at this, so angles are, that's an L, B, R and F, angles O and U, and angles B and N. That's it. It's that simple. Those are the congruent angles. So if we wanted to mark those, R is congruent to F. O is congruent to U. We have to use a different number of arcs. And B is congruent to N. The number of marks has nothing to do with the size of the angles. It just has to delineate which ones are the same and which ones are different. So that's how we mark them. Now, segments. 
Watch this. R O and F U. So segment. All right. And then O B and U N. All right, and then the only tricky one is the other way around, RB and FN. Are the same. So now we're gonna mark those. Are you Oh, wait, R, what did I say? R O. That should be an O right here. Okay. And then O B and U N. And that leaves this one congruent. That simple. All right. A B C Q T J. I'm just going to write Q T J since there's space here. Right underneath it. List the congruent parts. Okay? So I'm just going to mark them first. A and Q. B and T. And then C and J. Now I'm going to mark sides. So AB and QT. BC and TJ. And that just leaves this one easy enough. So that would be angles A and Q, B and T, and C and J. And line segment AB and QT. BC and TJ and then AC and QJ. That's simple. All right. You're given TIC and LOK. TIC. List the corresponding angles. So angles. T and L, I can write an L. Angles I and O, and angles C and K. And then sides, TI and LO. IC and LK. And then TC and LK. All right, can we conclude these are congruent? Well, let's see. We have A has this mark and E has this mark. So I'm going to write A here and E here. And then I'm just going to write ABC. Now, B is the right angle, D is the right angle, so D goes here and F goes there. So, let's look at BA. BA is supposed to be the same as ED. They're both three. Look at CD. I meant EDC, not EDF, my bad. Sorry. Silly me. Okay, so CD, that's this one. That should be the same as BC. It is. And then AC and EC are marked equal. <clears throat> so, therefore, yes. 
All right, finishing the Gruden statement for each triangle. YQX. Well, let's see. Y has 2. R has 2. So that goes first. Q has 1. Q has 1. X has 3. X has 3. FED. So F has 1. X has 1. D has 2. And W has 2. That's the third letter. And E has 3. V has 3. So notice how I had to go E, put the W at the end, based on going in order of uh, the number of markings. But that's okay. So F, D, E, if I went that way, would be the same as X, W, V. It just matters on the order. As long as they match up, we're good. All right. Find the value of x and y. All right. Well, notice this and this have one mark. So that was easy. y equals 48. We're done. Now, if this is 48 and this is 108, 108 plus 48 is 156. 180 minus 156 is 24. That angle is 24. Well, since B is B and D are the same, and notice how C and E are the same, A and F must be the same. So 2x minus y, which we know is 48, equals 24. So I'm going to add 24 to both sides. Sorry, 48 to both sides. And get 2x equals 72, which means x equals 36. So there's my x, and there's my y. And that's it.